All right, welcome back. You know, last time we left off, we were talking about our Hello Fredgicate application, and we we're talking about interfaces and you know all that different know-how of the interface. But we're gonna switch it up just a little bit because you're gonna notice something different. And what's different is, whoops, not that. So I got an elephant. I got a pet elephant in my backyard. So. Um, what that means is that we have a lion now installed on our computer and we're running 10.7.2 so still what does that mean that means we now can upgrade to Xcode 4 and we had 3.2.6 before which is fine or whatever and we, we launched it um, we had our interface and then interface builder was a second application so how do we get Xcode 4 let's go to the iPhone uh, developer.apple.com it's forward slash iPhone will take you to this link and it is we're gonna come down to downloads and Xcode 4 so we're gonna click on that and the reason we're going over this again I know we did an install tutorial before for 3.2.6 the reason we're going over this is because it's a little different and by when I say a little different you install it by actually using the App Store and Lion as opposed to um, using just a straight link and download as you or traditionally do. Also, you need to move. The tricky part is, is it's not really tricky, but 3.2.6, you have to have that in a different folder now because it's gonna, if you go to launch it, it's not gonna work. Uh, so you'll see what I mean in a second. Let's just go ahead and start. So Xcode 4.2 for Lion. Remember I was running Snow Leopard before, so I couldn't get it, but uh, we're going to have View and Mac App Store. It's going to launch the App Store down here and it's going to take us here. It's going to already say I haven't installed because I've not already been through this. It's a pretty healthy install of 1.68 gigabytes. So that's going to take a little while. Just let it install. It's going to ask you for your Apple ID. Um, and it might ask you to put, when you enter your Apple ID, if you've never made an Apple ID before, uh, it's going to ask you for a credit card put in a credit card it's not charging you anything it's a free download so when you come over to your purchases tab it's going to show in your purchases link and just to verify that that's free as you see price is free so it says I already have it installed you're going to see that it's already installed and this is going to throw you for a little bit of a loop let's go ahead and hide this it's higher window and now if we launched I've already done all this but if I'm telling you this so you know if you launched Xcode right now after getting um, getting it all up and run after downloading the 1.6 gigabytes and everything you're gonna see um, well let me just kill this real quick you're gonna see a screen hang on Ugh, my mouse is being crazy let me close the entire project there you go all right, you're going to see a screen that looks like what we're used to. Now, mine says 4.2. Yours, if it doesn't say 4.2 and already overwrite it, you might still see 3.2.6. Well, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to come up to your spotlight and you're going to need to type in um, this Xcode. And you'll see something that says install Xcode. Um, and this installer of Xcode 4 will tell you the necessary steps. I've already done these necessary steps. It tells you in these steps that you need to go ahead and name your developer folder of 3.2.6 to develop-3.2.6. And you'll see what, I see, see what I mean in a second. Let's go there. So that folder that we had before that was just developer, I renamed to developer dat dash 3.2.6 and this is our old environment so if I was actually to go run this which I actually did that wrong let me just drag and drop that back in there maybe that's trash okay so if I was actually just to run this guy I'd get my old development environment back see there it is so if you're seeing this off the get-go Again, just search for Xcode and Spotlight, and then the one thing that says install Xcode, that's going to take you to your installer for Xcode 4, but we're just going to kill this because we're not interested in this right now. So that's our version 3.2.6.
and again this will tell you those steps as well but I've already done it so um, you know there's no reason for me to do this again just follow the steps hit install after that all right now that we have let's back up a little bit this is our version of Xcode 4 in this folder like I said this is our old one now that we have it installed um, we're gonna launch it which we did this is where you'd launch it from just like before and we're gonna take a quick run through we're gonna create a new Xcode project and we're gonna create a single view application like we did before nothing you'll notice a couple different options in which you had before to work with um, you have your master detailed application um, which is a little different you, this tabbed application should be pretty familiar uh, you can start with an empty application but we're gonna start with our single view application because this before it was just called view but um, now it's single view which is the exact same thing let's go ahead and hit next and it's gonna start asking for a bunch of different parameters here for your project we're gonna give it a project name we're gonna say hello um, world and we're gonna give it an identifier of Fredgicate and then it's gonna ask for a uh, class prefix well everything in your classes folder that you're going to code uh, will have this prefix appended to it and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second it's gonna ask you for device family we're gonna choose universal that's gonna include both um, we're gonna use a storyboard automatic reference counting we'll talk about all this in another tutorial but just leave those all checked hit next I already have something named hello Fredricate so we're gonna name this hello world actually we're gonna over yeah we're just gonna name it hello world it's gonna automatically take the name from your project and save it so now we have our package up here our hello world project I mean and um, oops. you'll notice already the layouts just slightly different we had a classes folder um, and things like that before just, just sort through this and you'll figure out pretty quickly what everything does this again is just our headers um, our view controllers you know a lot of different things going on here nothing that we haven't seen in the previous tutorials it's just they're under different folders now our frameworks still pretty much remain the same and our products and remember before in the previous tutorial I talked about um, if you see these in red that's a warning sign for you haven't even run the project so let's go ahead and just flat out run this project real quick and these should go black once the build the build is succeeded it's gonna launch any second here and it's gonna come up with nothing nothing as expected because we haven't done anything so I'm gonna go ahead and quit the simulator and now we're ready to go and build something um, but let's just talk about a little bit about what everything does. You, you now have these are your targets. This is your project. So um, you, know, you can set if you wanted to develop 4.3, that's fine. But of course, we're going to want to develop for the latest and greatest, which is 5.0. Uh, so let's go ahead and keep that the way it is. You can set English, your languages, a lot of different things. Check them all out. We'll talk about a lot more of this in detail as we work through some examples. Um, so our main storyboard here now this is we're gonna you can switch to the iPad or iPhone and you can also choose your main interface but uh, let's go ahead and I even get confused sometimes because they move things around on me oh here it is it's already open um, let's go ahead and look at this let's zoom out a little bit so if we we're developing um, remember before we had these things called .xib which are zip files well those aren't really these are now storyboards so the .xib has now been replaced with storyboards and if you double clicked that .xib from before in the previous tutorial it launched interface builder well interface builder isn't here anymore it's kind of all built in here it's here but it's not so um, you know it's a, it's a complete unit now and you also have your iPhone storyboard as well, so that changes up a little bit. Um, and you'll notice in the iPhone in the in the interface builder before you had your first responder, your view controller. Of course, we just have a different name here. And if you notice what I was talking about before in your classes, 
These are going to support. These are going to hold a lot of your classes. You'll notice the class prefix all has F R E D, which is freed in front of it, and that's what we set in the beginning project settings. Now, if you break down the view controller, there's your view. It's the same thing that displayed before when we were used to using Interface Builder, and it wasn't all compiled together. Now. There's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, you got your editor options up here, your your view options, organizers, tons of stuff to go through and, and sort. But we want to get back to where we were before, so we're going to go with our iPhone dot storyboard, and by default you're going to be on the file templates library. And there's lots of cool templates that you can work here that's going to help with your coding, but the, um, there's also going to have a code snippet library, but the important part is the objects library over here. And what you're going to do is if you scroll down, you'll see all the objects you saw before, like table views, navigation, tab bar, controllers. But if you keep on scrolling, you'll see the label that we had before. Just take, oops, if it lets me, there you go. There you go. There you go. I just had to zoom in a little bit. Didn't like that far distance you can change that to hello fredricate and we can put this in the middle just like we did before we've, we've seen this all in a previous tutorial now I'm just showing you the new interface because some people will get confused by the new interface um, not nothing really tricky here and remember we had text fields before that were considered just like a login and password type setting I'm actually all gonna bump this up just a little bit the top of our uh, screen because I'm going to add a uh, picker view. Why not? I'm going to add something in here. We're going to make it just a little bit smaller. Put it in the middle. I mean, this is, doesn't really fit here, but you know, I'm just showing you for example that you can pretty much make whatever you want by using this objects library to get a good head start so now let's go ahead oops, let's go ahead and run this come back and hit run we're gonna notice something happened here and what the something is is we still we have nothing because we're in the iPad and remember in a previous tutorial I talked about how you need to switch your device to what you're looking at so if we switch if we go to hardware device and iPhone now if we scroll over we can see our hello world application now the picker didn't show up there's a couple of reasons for that actually that was probably a bad example let me drag out something different Do a date picker and just plop it in the middle. There you go. Now, if we run it, there you go. Again, it pops up by default. The iPad, if we switch to the iPhone, scroll over one, click on our application. Now we got an interactive little thing going on here with our text fields. So pretty much we're back to where we left off, just with a new interface and everything. Um, you know, now is going to be pretty, pretty even easier for us than it was before. If it wasn't already easy enough, um, and the last little bit we'll talk about is if you wanted to um, before I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think we went to something like set you set the source that way when you run this project it doesn't pop up in the iPad every single time. So the way you do it now is you just come here to the simulator and hit switch it, run it, and it comes up by default. And if you wanted to go back, back to the iPad, of course the iPad's going to come up with nothing. But you get the drift here, and you know we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that, and we'll talk in the uh, next tutorial. We'll go further and keep developing a real world application that way we can keep creating cool things and you can get a much better feel for how the rest of this interface works and to build cool stuff so we'll see you in the next tutorial